Thank you very much. Interesting discussion for later <laughs> and provocative, but uh, very reasonable. Uh, and now just uh, introducing uh, Professor Oseka from uh, Varsov University, and he's a historian and researcher on political history, and we are going to move to Polish case. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me here, and uh, it's my first stay in Barcelona, but I'm really, really in enchanted with the city. It's beautiful, uh, so uh, so I support here uh, Foyer in his uh, in his love to to Barcelona. Um, well, my ambitions, ambitions of my paper are um, rather modest. I'm going to provide you with more factual, more detailed uh, uh, portrait of what happened in 1968 in Poland, actually. Um, and uh, I will explain later why the what's uh, the mystery behind the title, why I'm going to talk about two revolutions instead of one. Uh, so, um, the year of, of uh, as it was told uh, before, the, the year 1968 in Poland it refers mostly to one month, uh, the, to March. And uh, uh, this, uh, this sentence, March 1968, exists on, uh, also as March uh, uh, only. If you um, uh, refer, if you mention March in political context in Polish, uh, it means 1968 usually. So people associate March with 1968. It's, uh, uh, it's obvious, by default, obvious association for everyone. And uh, it was a very peculiar moment in Polish history because uh, it fuses uh, um, a few different social and political phenomena, uh, a few social and political processes. Um, it was a time of students' revolt. Yet on the other hand, it was a time of noxious propaganda aimed at the elites. Uh, it was, at the same time, it was a time of, of ferocious anti-Semitic purges. Uh, so this is why it was the tale of two revolution, which mostly by, by the coincidence occurred at the same time and which referred to each other. Uh, it's somehow very difficult story to tell uh, uh, shortly, briefly, so if you uh, don't understand uh, much after my presentation. Don't worry, most of Poles don't understand this story as well. So uh, it's it's very very mysterious. Uh, so mm, the Polish March 1968 started on March 8th uh, with the uh, rally at the Warsaw University. Uh, it was illegal rally that gathered up to uh, 3,000 students. Uh, perhaps uh, it doesn't look that impressive here, but believe me, it is this very iconic picture of Polish history, one of the most iconic, probably like, uh, you know, Mustache of Lech Wałęsa or something like that. This is the iconic picture of students in front of uh, uh, library at Warsaw University. It was illegal rally because it was not uh, staged by the government. It was not uh, uh, summoned by the authorities. So it was by definition illegal because it was spontaneous one. Uh, and it was first such rally since uh, almost 10 years from uh, since 1956. So uh, it was very impressive even for students uh, to take part in such event. Uh, and the immediate reason uh, for, uh, for the rally to be called mm, was the party's ban, the, the, the Communist Party ban on the theatrical play uh, For Father's Eve. It was its classical piece of Polish romanticism, the, the required reading in schools, uh, uh, the, the, the most important one uh, piece of, uh, of Polish literature. Uh, and basically, th there are many uh, layers of, 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 this, uh, of this play, but the, the main story is the story of students revolt revolting against uh, Tsarist despotism. So it was an obvious dead ringer for, uh, uh, for young people in, in late 60s uh, because uh, um, they found obvious similarities with uh, with Poland stuck within the f Soviet zone of influence, uh, uh, 
uh, and they 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 seen it very similar the struggle of uh, of the students uh, depicted in the in the play. Uh, Mm, so there was a lot of meaningful applause uh, at the most significant moments of the play, for instance, when, uh, when the uh, Tsarist despotism um, uh, was denounced uh, uh, in the, uh, during the play, the, the, the people uh, 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 in auditory uh, um, applauded and uh, shouted, uh, um, and uh, shouted, for example, yes, yes, good say, um, and uh, well said, and and it was uh, it was very um, political, meaningful, uh, and the, to understand why it happened, we need to go back a few years earlier, when when at the University of Warsaw emerged a student milieu of some kind, uh, uh, basically. Uh, the 60s in Poland, uh, this time of so-called small stabilization. The term was invented to denote the life at low, albeit predictable standards. Uh, <coughs> and after the toll of 1956, people weren't interested in politics anymore. Uh, the, it was, it's the time when parties rule seemed totally unchallenged. Uh, to the extent that uh, party officials even urge youth to engage in, in politics. They tried to encourage them to, to organize some discussion clubs because uh, from uh, authorities' perspective, young people totally lacked the sense of community, were completely f focused on their individual careers uh, and uh, um, uh, didn't pay respect to values of socialism of, or, and of uh, social, uh, socialist society. So they were urged to, to, to engage in, in political life, uh, uh, mm, uh, which uh, uh, Communist Party uh, soon come to regret. Uh, mm, in 1964, the group of young, of young people, uh, the first year student mostly, entered the ranks of the Socialist Youth Association at the University of, of Warsaw, and they organized a discussion club, um, uh, the subversive nature of which soon became uh, clear. They were, discuss they were discussing topics like uh, economy, sociology. Uh, they were trying to reinterpret uh, Marxism theories. They were debating on uh, on forbidden historical topics like cutting massacre, for instance, or Soviet invasion of Poland of 1939. So uh, definitely it wasn't that kind of political activity that uh, um, communist uh, authorities were interested in. Uh, so soon the discussion club was banned, uh, which uh, didn't prevent young people from taking part in, in uh, more subversive activity, quite the opposite. Uh, they became radicalized, uh, and the legal activities were replaced with uh, illegal ones. Uh, they started to gather at their private places, and the debates went on. They, for instance, they were discussing a very important document, the open letter to the party by Karol Modzelewski and Jacek Kuroń. I, uh, I decided to show you their faces uh, because they are also very iconic persons of, uh, uh, of uh, Polish history and the contemporary Polish left as well. Uh, so you can see you can hear you can see them in the uh, uh, bottom row. Uh, uh, Karol Modzelewski in the middle. Jacek Kuroń, unfortunately, he deceased uh, ten, year, ten years ago. Uh, over 10 years ago to the, to the right, mm, and Karol Mozeleski um, uh, thankfully is still alive and in good shape. And uh, mm, uh, uh, they were young academics, uh, approximately 10 years senior to the student group, which were their friends. Uh, and the, the open letter contained overt criti criticism of the communist system, uh, mostly based on Marxist theories. Uh, the letter was inspired, for instance, uh, and here we have uh, um, Yugoslavian clue uh, by Milo Vangila's notion of the new class. Uh, in 1965, Kuroń and Modzelewski were arrested and sentenced to three years, and there were 
significant demonstrations during the trial. Their younger friends came to the court and arranged the demonstration in the corridor. They sang Internationale. They uh, shouted uh, subversive slogans. Um, this is the time, uh, basically, when the, 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 the uh, youth group was nicknamed Commandos because the students used to invade official meetings at the university, overtake, overtaking the course of the discussion uh, through subversive, uh, confusing... Oh, I speak that loud that I don't need a microphone, I think. Uh, through subversive, confusing questions. Um, like, for instance, asking speaker, you condemned American aggression against Vietnam, and what could you tell us about uh, uh, Soviet aggression against Hungary in 1956, or what could you tell uh, us about uh, uh, persecution of uh, uh, underground uh, movement after uh, Soviet entered uh, Poland in 1945, uh, and so on and so on. And, uh, well, who was the young, those young people, the commanders? Uh, here you can see them. Um, picture of uh, New Year's Eve party from 1967 to 1968. Uh, really? Uh, yeah. And it was a group of no more, no more than 100 um, individuals. Uh, it was informal, a circle of friends. Uh, they had uh, co some common political beliefs, but uh, they also did sports, drank together, they did love. They were simply a close-knit group, a g group that was still raising because new people would join the group, uh, attracted by its political stance, its audacity. Uh, mm, the most important names, I, I'm not going to, to drown you with, uh, with names, but th there are, for instance, uh, Adam Michnik, uh, well-known Polish dissident. On the picture, you can see him in the um, upper right corner. Or, for instance, Jan Tomasz Gross, the famous historian from Princeton University, uh, in the very bottom, uh, the one who smiles. Uh, and. Uh, 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 the girl uh, uh, in the center, it's uh, uh, Irena Gross, also famous sociologist uh, from the United States nowadays. Uh, so they represented all social strata. They came out from different families, uh, uh, from different classes, yet many of them came from communist families. Uh, their parents were usually former, but uh, communist officials, high rank party members, often of Jewish origin, which was a fact which was very important for secret police, and uh, secret police would uh, later take advantage of, of the fact of their Jewish origin. They, it, was, it will be used against them in future. Uh, so in autumn 1967, the commandos started uh, the demonstrations at the theater auditorium. This is what I told you um, uh, previously during the Fourth Father's Eve uh, play. Mm, and eventually the play was banned, the two of the students were expelled, uh, and protesting against the repressions, commandos summoned the, the, the rally, mm, uh, the, the, the very rally on March the 8th, which was brutally suppressed by the police, both uniform and by the so-called so -called workers' activists of workers' vanguards. Uh, they were simply hit squad pretending to be voice of the outraged working class. You can see here in the middle uh, the, the, the people in plain clothes uh, uh, holding truncheons. Uh, there are, were very uh, uh, dangerous truncheons because they were made of uh, uh, plain steel, so uh, they, they, they hit really harshly. Uh, and uh, obviously, it, the reason to introduce the, those uh, workers' activists, though those workers' uh, vanguard, uh, worker vanguard, was that uh, police couldn't, weren't al allowed, were not allowed to enter university uh, without uh, rector approval. So the and the um, uh, outraged workers, as um, normal civ regular civilians, were allowed to enter just like that the university. So they started. Uh, uh, beating at fair, as a uh, first force, but then it turned out they, 
they couldn't manage with students because students, uh, there were too much students, so the regular police entered the university and the carnage started. It was, uh, the, 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 they were strongly and very brutally, the students were strong, very brutally beaten. Uh, and the news of the political attack, uh, police attack was, dissemi di were, was disseminated mostly via Radio Free Europe, which was the most important source of uh, independent information in communist Poland. Uh, it, broad it, broad it broadcasted from Munich, uh, uh, but it was operated by Polish journalists who emigrated from, escaped from communist Poland or uh, in, in 1956, uh, earlier or later, uh, and they provided Poland with independent information. So the radio was the main uh, source of the, of the news um, on the uh, police brutality. And then something quiet happened. Uh, the student protests quite, quite unexpectedly, unexpectedly spread all over the country and uh, police brutality and, and the great shock it entailed uh, triggered the revolution, actually. Mm, and it was the students' revolution all over the country. Here you can see example of uh, um, uh, uh, student m manifesto displayed on the front wall of Warsaw Polytechnic. Uh, uh, but similar uh, st uh, student strike, student rallies, uh, uh, protests of, of any kind sprouted in all major academic centers. Uh, uh, a few dozens of manifestos were proclaimed uh, with demands, uh, de demanding freedom of speech, uh, condemning police brutality and the lies of the press. Uh, uh, it was the, the, the core uh, demands of, uh, of uh, student protest. Uh, freedom of, pr uh, freedom of uh, speech uh, and condemning police and condemning the, uh, the mm, lies in the press because the coverage, official coverage uh, uh, was incredibly warped, uh, which I will, I'm going to, to, to uh, describe uh, uh, in details later. Mm. And uh, in the same time, students kept declaring their commitment to socialist values and uh, their loyalty toward the system and toward the Communist Party. Uh, this is very similar to what happened in Yugoslavia. It wasn't protest against communism. It was protest, uh, they demanded communism to, to deliver its promises. They demanded socialism to deliver its promise. To be, to, uh, they demanded socialism to be uh, what it was expected to be, to, uh, to uh, cease to be dictatorship and to, to, to become a real... Uh, uh, representation of, of the nation, of the people. Uh, mm, uh, very characteristic and uh, worth remembering trait of those students' protests were uh, um, effort to, to uh, approach factories, uh, uh, to win over the workers in factories. Uh, uh, the slogans like workers are with us were shouted in many students' rallies and demonstrations. Uh, uh, and although many of the young workers joined the street demonstrations, no factory announced a solidarity strike and students' delegation were not allowed to enter factories. Uh, so um, students uh, b basically uh, undertook many efforts to, to reach the workers but to no avail. Workers weren't, as, as, as a group, as a whole, weren't interested in joining the student protest at all because they basically they didn't consider the students' slogans to be important. It wasn't, uh, it didn't reverberate it among workers. Uh, it was a time when workers uh, were mostly considered with low wages, uh, bad safety, the, 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 the factories were plagued with terrible accidents, but they were not interested in the freedom of speech. It wasn't an uh, uh, important issue from, uh, factor, from the from, uh, uh, f f perspective of the factories. Uh, Mm. The very inability to mobilize the workers was seen as the main cause of failure of the movement. Uh, um, people I interviewed uh, 
1968, the activists of 1968 told me we, call, we lost because we didn't manage to rise the workers. Um, and uh, in the mid of m March, Władysław Gomułka, the first secretary of Communist Party, uh, rejected any idea in public speech. He rejected any, any idea of negotiations with students. And then the protest was um, uh, soon suppressed. It was totally suppressed after three weeks uh, of, its, of its existence. Uh, people were arrested, expelled from the universities. Uh, uh, they were hit with sort of penal conscription. I mean, uh, there was extra conscription beyond the calendar announced for uh, young people. And obviously, where they uh, cease to be, that when the young people cease to be students, they were, uh, uh, they were conscripted to army uh, with this conscription. It was, uh, it was obviously meant as a tool of, of punishment. Mm, uh, to get them in the in the uh, um, um, arm in the ranks of of the army, uh, it seems obvious to me that it was a generational movement. The March revolt was carried out by young intelligentsia, born mostly between 1945 and 1949. These people were peers of communist Poland to some extent. Born just after the war, they didn't know any other political system, uh, so. One party rule, the command economy, unanimity of the media, all of this comprised their kind of natural environment. They were not scared of the system because they didn't remember the Stalinist period as well, which is very important. Uh, uh, it's a, a very Im important barrier. If, uh, whether you remembered uh, uh, Stalinist, uh, Stalinist ter terror or not, and people who like their uh, parents or older brothers, sisters who remembered uh, uh, the fear of Stalinist time were not that much eager to involve in political activity because they knew how it could happen, they, they, how, how it could end. Uh, uh, they knew what could happen. Uh, mm, and for younger people, uh, they didn't know the, the, that kind of fear. They, didn't, they were not scared. They were not afraid. And I, as I said, there was another kind of revolution. The students' protest has been denounced by propaganda as Zionist plot. Uh, the media displayed the protest as a collusion of former Jewish Stalinists who used their children to provoke the students and to stir up anarchy and thus to reinstate themselves in power. Uh, this is a the, 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 the very iconic example of anti-Semitic propaganda of 1968. Um, it denounced uh, uh, allegedly uh, double-faced uh, students, activists, uh, who, on the, uh, who pretend to be Polish patriots and to uh, uh, take care of, of uh, uh, freedom in Poland, uh, but actually taking instruction from uh, Israel, from Tel Aviv. Uh, so, um, uh, the, but the propaganda was, it was uh, about the idea of hidden foe, you know, hidden enemy within the society which sh should be unmasked, should be found. It was very tricky and actually very catchy. So, uh, I think many Poles liked the, the trait of propaganda, uh, the story about hidden traitors uh, from the privileged elites. Because the propaganda at the same time was aimed against Jews, but against, also against the intellectual elite, intellectual elites, uh, elites portrayed as Jewish, as conceited, as detesting ordinary Poles and immersed in inconceivable luxury. Uh, it, the, the luxury could be a pair of jeans from, uh, from uh, France or uh, French cosmetics or um, American toys uh, or uh, electronic equipment. Every artifact from the West were perceived in Poland at this time as a token of luxury, of, being, of belonging to privileged elite. If you possessed something from the West, you were in the upper middle class by the very definition. Uh, and obviously, the, most of people uh, uh, was envy of, of, the, of those privileges. Mm, uh, the press was also condemning those who in the past had been uh, reportedly distorting national history, 
tarnishing the reputation of Poland, downgrading national martyrology and national suffering in the time of, of the German occupation. It was a very important uh, uh, strand in the, in the tale about the foe. The, the enemy uh, detest Polish martyrology. The, uh, the enemy uh, is uh, uh, detest and uh, mocks uh, the, uh, Polish uh, uh, Polish heroism. Uh, um, so uh, he detests Polish history. The propaganda was accompanied with, by massive by massive anti-Semitic purge that hit thousands of Poles of Jewish origin be they high-level party official or, for instance, uh, pediatricians at the provincial, provincial clinic. Uh, 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 mostly the latter, uh, of course, because the, uh, beside the, 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 what propaganda claimed that it's against uh, elites, uh, the uh, purges, uh, the, uh, uh, purges affected mostly normal people of Jewish origin, normal Poles of Jewish origin. They were the... Uh, the first and, and the uh, most important victim of, of this witch hunt. Uh, mm, the PED was launched mostly by the party apparatchiks uh, in their 40s. So we can see another generational pattern here. Uh, uh, party apparatchiks in their 40s frustrated and yearning for some sort of career boost. Uh, there were people uh, uh, who had no chance uh, previously to enter the uh, higher ranks of the uh, Communist Party and they, uh, they still uh, stayed on the margin of political life uh, hoping for some kind of uh, incident, of some kind of development, some kind of uh, uh, crisis which helped them to, to uh, go up the ladder of, of, of the m m political hierarchy. Uh, m they were dreaming about the ethnically clean version of the, communis of the communism, and they pin pinned all the blame for the failures of the system on Polish Jews. Mm, uh, and the student revolution provided them with kind of handy pretext to, let's say, further their cause. Uh, mm, thus, 1968 in Poland, has got its noble and its sinister feature. It witnessed both the struggle for freedom and civil rights and the outbursts of, of the vitriolic nationalism. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>